it's um, 6.15 right on the, on the dot. And um, first, we can verify that this meeting has been properly warned, posted at three places, and posted on the website and emailed to the um, Herald of Randolph, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's good or else we'd all have to go home. Mm -hmm. now, yeah. Anybody have any um, additions to the agenda that they'd like to have put on there tonight? Yes, I have one um, worker's con contract that's been signed by Norm Christensen that you guys just have to sign. <clears throat> All right. Um, and then I guess we'll move on to the, the minutes of the last select board meeting, the pre-town meeting on February 26 as presented and I had no correction Miss Patty you were well you were in the audience for that one but um, that I accept the motion to approve these minutes I'll second it. It. all in favor aye. aye all right and this one goes for you <clears throat> we also have minutes from the special select board meeting on Saturday March 3rd and I would move to accept those as presented I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You weren't here, but maybe we can talk it. <laughs> and then we have the minutes for the town meeting on March 5th. And um, I looked through those and clarified a couple points, and I moved to accept these as they were typed up. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And we've got. Those. <clears throat> and that brings us down on the list to uh, guest Harlan. Your name is on there. That you had something you wanted to talk about. I thought we were, <clears throat> you were going to put me down and talk about the quick claim deed and the shredder. The shredder. All right. So the quick claim deed. Deed. What do you have? What was your question about that? Uh, I was just wondering how you decided how is the town related to that piece of land funny you should ask i can tell you it's it's, it's quite a quite a story and uh let me get my notes here <clears throat> it's um it's kind of strange refresh the system the exact thing you're talking about that parcel on so my property what key to what okay parcel. that's what i thought all right so basically the, um, the way this started was back in the 1700s, the governor of New Hampshire, because Vermont was, the ownership of Vermont was argued between New Hampshire and New York. And, and the government of New Hampshire would set out certain properties that had to pay lease payments to support schools and support churches or parishes. And this particular one was to support a parish up there. And then the revolution came along and with the constitution, it became um, put forth that there should be separation of church and state. So it was kind of a little issue of the states paying monies to a church off of lease lands. Um, that muddled around for a while until the early 1900s when the state of Vermont put it on the towns to make up their minds what they were going to do about it. And there was probably no money collected on that property for at least 40 years or so. There was the calculations that were done on if you look at a dollar in the 1700s yeah. versus a dollar now, um, I think that the lease payments were like two dollars and fifty cents a year or so, and and the extrapolation of what that value would be on into the future, yeah, of yeah, course, yeah, it shrinks yeah. down. They figured all that out. Yeah, right. They figured all that out. They figured all what, that out. What it's, I was wondering so, was, yeah. I guess specifically, is how many acres are lease land? How many in acres? Town? Yeah. In town, I. I can't give you the specific number. There's a few, a few spots. I think there's. No, no, no. I mean this particular parcel. Well, that's how many acres? Five acre parcel. I, I presume that it's, it's the entire line to the whole plot. It's you know, the entire. I don't it's know. the entire parcel. I would assume so, but I don't quote me on that. I don't know. I didn't. I haven't looked into that amount of detail on it. Yeah. 
that title search that's all well the um the title insurance people are the ones who have brought this to attention and assisting insisting that the these um these vestiges of colonial law get dealt with because they had trouble issuing title insurance on properties that have these attachments to them. So that's what has prompted the recent attention to cleaning up those, those issues. And in fact, there's a requirement that the town has to identify and decide which, uh, what it owns with lease lands and what it wants to do about them. Yeah. on into the future. To get back to my question, yes. how much is lease land? It's a 45 acre plot, so I assume it's that. The whole thing? I, I, I assume, I said, don't quote me on that. I, I, I don't know. Well, yeah. Nobody knows? Why it's don't a, you come in to, tomorrow it's and the look it up? It's, it's a 45 record. acre plot, and I think that's what the deed was about, so I'm assuming that that's the amount. Did you find it on that wall? Found lots on it. You have something you want to share? Sure. All back through the history of that plot. All the way back to uh, 1861, 1851. It was variously 114 acres plus 90 acres. When it became identified as lots, there was a lot 68, 64, 67, which is the lot immediately speaking. It comes through the history, through all these years, that lot apparently was 45 plus or minus acres. The research in the town office, in our actual records, is a little bit different than what was presented by the attorneys for the people that bought it. It's still 45 acres. I didn't see anything back beyond that that are in our records, but at that point in time, it was known as old Philadelphia, perhaps Goshen, which means those records are not in our offices. Right. To go back historically to what you're talking about right. is how it all occurred. I did not go that direction. I only went through our own town records. Right. But if a warranty deed was going to be issued and the bank was going to be satisfied, I think somebody on behalf of the buyers should have gone all the way through those records. That's not available in our town. I don't know that it wasn't done. It's just that that's not what it's in our town. A title search for a modern day transaction, a real estate transaction, only goes back four years. Well, there's your answer from somebody who's in real estate. And within that 40 years, it's within the age you're talking about. And that certainly would give the history that you're speaking to or the history that I have here within that 40 years. Within that 40 years, it's pretty much the bones, the current bones. Kind of what I thought. I do have a question regarding this transaction, however. Information that was presented to the town in the course of this came up over several select board meetings in 2016. It was available to the public in our minutes. So is it uh, Smokey Bowen and Marty Mayer appeared here on May 9th to bring up the issue of this parcel and what they had in mind. On May 23rd, there's a comment in the minutes that Robert, I assume this is Mayor, confirmed that the lawyer has reviewed the case and we can do a quick claim. Nothing was ever explained beyond that why we did a quick claim. The following meeting, it was to be put out for the posting for 30 days. It's been identified on that posting and other various records through the town with three different addresses, which makes it a little difficult to follow. On July 11th, you, Dune, moved to execute the quick claim. It having been posted, it was to be done the next day for $333.33. There's nothing in the town records post July 12th saying that was actually accomplished, which would just be a follow-up for the public to see that we did something. But I do have a question regarding the $333. And I do follow what you're talking about, the mathematics of what it was worth at the time. But it was one of the suggestions 
in a proposed conveyance approach that our attorney should have reviewed, that's the town's attorney, that the town could use the full charge of $1,000. So this was a suggestion that the town could use the full charge of $1,000. One, one, one of several suggestions. Yes. yes, it was a suggestion. That's yes. what I'm saying. A suggestion. I don't know what the review was that was done by our town attorney, but when it's suggested by the buyer's attorney that the town could accept $1,000 and maybe not have all this be going on. Oh, it would probably still be going on. It's a possibility. Yeah. But at any level. So we accept one third of that. <coughs> now, my question there would be what was the recommendation for the fiduciary responsibility of town officers of saying, oh, just give us a third of what's suggested of one of the possible options? Since it's very common in conversations here to talk about, you know, bringing as much income into the town and handling our money properly, let's take a third of what might have been a better offer, proposal on the part of buyer's attorney. It's just a little confusing looking through the records because there's nothing to explain any of that. And I realize that minutes are exactly minutes, but there's nothing to explain any of that. So you phrase that as a third of that amount, but that was actually like the middle road of what we were presented as the options. And the lawyer advised that, that the $333.33 would actually be more than generous in covering our not responsive that thousand dollars was kind of way overkill i think three hundred and thirty three dollars is at at two hundred and or two dollars and fifty cents a year is covering like 250 years of of lease payments it's it's really it's a token gesture and it's the other uh, was it 60 or 120 dollars was the other was the minimal that would satisfy it and we chose to go a few steps up from the minimal level of satisfaction so yes we could have charged them ten thousand dollars i suppose but we did we chose what we felt was fair at the time and was approved and, and suggested by the lawyer so the thousand dollars was one option we thought that was extreme well one of the points here is that this amount whatever it is yeah. has to be held in a trust yeah. for which only the town can spend is the income right i don't know three times the income is still a nominal amount of money but yeah. nonetheless yeah. it was an available option now i realize that the select board relies very heavily on the town attorney for helping them make wise decisions but it just doesn't seem like the most prudent decision on behalf of the taxpayers just my comment okay well that's um, what happened, and that's the history of it. And in regards to the trust fund being set up, that's come to our attention that that didn't follow through, and now that has been followed through. So. And that was me. Yeah. So if you like to point fingers, you can point them right I'm at me. Where <laughs> and, 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 and correcting. No, it is being corrected as we speak. Yeah. So that's the, uh, do you have any more questions about the lease land part? No, okay. So, and you also wanted to talk about um, the shredding of, of old documents? Yeah, we kind of blew right through that. We never really yeah. got into the data. See that box right next to you, Harlan? I can yeah. try to explain this. That box is full of stuff that I need to get rid of. Those are our old so things from things are like land records, land deals, and anything. No, like that. land records belong in the vault and they'll stay there forever. This is old paid bills, old old stuff. So like it's nothing that'll pertain to anything. Nothing, nothing that will pertain to anything. And as long as we have okay. an audit okay. every year, okay. That's as just that what I to know. stuff that I had yep. sent to you is not easily understood. Well, just, nothing's getting chewed up that pertains to anything. No, no that's why we brought it out, so you can look through email. there and satisfy yourself. Well, I'm running out of stuff to start my soul. Here. Well, there you go. That's what I do with mine. I, I have to report that to the state first, so <laughs> everything that we yeah. use for record retention has to be reported to the state. And there's a whole ugly set of guidelines that you have to follow that really don't make a lot of sense at all, but it has to be done. Doing one last thing. Did you say we do still hold some lease land in the town? I believe we do. Fishing game has uh, Riley Bostwick. That's the only thing that, that, that I know of anyway. 
package to get them out and all that up. But I think that's something. Here. Not for sale, is it? Yeah. 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 All right, so we'll um, shred that conversation and move forward. Um, means, Joan, you had something to um, talk about. Uh, I have a bunch of stuff on Rose, um, and a lot of his information that maybe you want uh, read between now and the next meeting talk about some more because it's a lot of detail stuff but I'll just run through what it is um, first um, we have something we adopted in 2011 which most towns have adopted though not necessarily all of them called the town road and bridge standards and uh, those are something that are general, generally um, describe how the, what standards the town is going to apply for maintaining its roads and bridges. And it goes into a lot of detail about slopes and culverts and you know grading of roads and that kind of thing. Um, and the policy that, well, it was a, I'm not sure it's a policy, but anyway, it was adopted in 2011. Since that time, VTrans uh, has updated them. In 2013, they came out with a new set which essentially follows the same uh, procedure as the previous one, but updates it to more recent standards. And the reason why they recommend strongly that towns adopt these is it affects how much money we're eligible for, uh, for through grants for road, uh, road and bridge and culverts, and replacement, uh, re uh, upgrading, et cetera, repairs. Um, we get substantially more if we have adopted these standards. And also when it comes time for FEMA to step in, if we've got some kind of a flood event that qualifies for federal funding, it also affects how much money we are eligible to get from FEMA and how much they'll pay for repairs up to current standards as opposed to what uh, was in, in place that got damaged or destroyed in a flood. Um, so. I'm recommending, and VTrans is strongly recommending that the town adopt the current standards, which are now 2013. They will be upgraded again, probably not until 2021, to conform with the best management practices recommended by the state through the general road permit. Um, so I reviewed the 2011 standards that we have now and compare them to the 2013 standards. And there are enough changes that I think you should just familiarize yourself with them before you just go ahead and adopt it. Um, so I'd like to be able to give you sort of a summary of what the differences are. Do you need to email that to all three? Yeah, I can do that. just want you to know. If you don't have it printed already? Uh, no, because I was no. just working on it <coughs> starting yeah. today. And I did check with VTrans first and they, I asked them whether, when they need that and whether it's something they require or just recommend and they say, well, they strongly recommend it and they would like to have <coughs> adopted before they meet with us um, which they say will be sometime this month uh, because we need to meet with them prior to the august 15th date when we want to be submitting um, grant applications through the class two road permit stuff so that's number one um, secondly uh, this was uh, dan something i think you were doing i just wanted to make sure whether it was done because it's something we have to say whether we've done it or not which is uh, they ask whether um, they're going to be doing center line pavement marking on class one and two roads this year supposedly starting april 1st though i'm sure that's weather depending and going through october 31st and they need to know if there's any roads uh, paved roads that we would be doing work on so that they can time the pavement remarking to be after the work has been done. So I think maybe uh, North Power Road is in that category. Yeah. Oh. Uh -oh. No, it's all right. Hi. <laughs> so is, are you, yeah. that's all yep. done. She's okay, good. Rat. Um, I'm working on the annual financial plan, which also is part of the discussion when we meet with uh, the state it has to be submitted prior to April 15th, preferably in March. So I'll be sending that to you as well, asking you to take a look at it. Pretty much follows what we say we're going to be doing in our budget. 
but I did notice in the budget um, that we don't say anything about major road related work that we might plan to do in the coming fiscal year um, and that is something that um, we should talk about even if it's not actually in the budget you know, some speculative because it's depending on whether we get grants but um, it's something we should have sort of planned out at least for this year and it would be really nice if we can start thinking about you know being more than one year ahead so we can anticipate um, where we're going to be working and what we need to raise do we know when that um, the meeting with the state is going to be about our no they need to contact us <laughs> um, okay. that is soon but yeah. um, I guess I'm yeah. asking because is this something that we should execute that um, the update in the standards before our next select board meeting or is this something that we could look at and then do at our next meeting? Um, we'll say that unless we hear otherwise. Unless we hear otherwise and we could have a special properly yeah, we one. Need to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then I left some copies for all of you and then also some extra copies in case anybody's interested in looking at it the new municipal road permit which was instituted at the end of January um, has a lot of requirements over a period of time between starting about now starting July 1st really this year going through 2032 36 36 okay um, and again it's a lot of detail so I don't expect you to to read it now but I these are sort of the highlights of what the requirements are and what's expected of us, what's expected of all towns for the next period of time uh, to meet to meet their new road stand maintenance of road standards. Essentially, is what it is. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I just wonder if I get a copy of that. Oh, right here. Yeah, I'll put it on the table there. And then I was wondering if I could also get a copy of the. Uh, your summary of the changes. Oh, uh, that. that's not written up yet. Well, I mean, you know, whenever. Yeah, okay, I can do that. Can I uh, oh, yes. get that? Do Can I get that email to me? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're right here. Did that the summary of the the new road permit do they have any information or suggestions about uh, funding sources for some of that yeah they do um most of them we know about already yeah um and what the legislature is doing over time starting uh in this fiscal year is they're putting a lot more money from general um, the state's general budget uh into these programs so that they you know a lot more towns can apply for a lot more money to do these projects Good. And we've been, you know, it sounds been pretty good about tapping into that, yeah, and yeah. there's there's more we could be doing. We could be doing. Yeah. Um, we also have uh, the benefit of the White River Partnership and U.S. Forest Service money in our cooperative road agreement, which makes a huge contribution. Um, I mean, they give us a couple yeah. hundred thousand dollars every year through that cooperative road agreement, and it really goes a long way to doing a lot of stuff. And not just you know near or adjacent to the national forest, but on the other side of town as well. Uh, so um, we have plenty to do into the future, won't we? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so this annual operating fee of two thousand dollars, there's funds it's, in place uh, for that. Well, I'll take it out of the highway mm -hmm. budget. That's yeah, it's something that going okay. forward, you know, those fees mm -hmm. need to be incorporated in the yeah. highway budget. Yeah. Like if we don't pay it, nobody can drive on the road. So. <laughs> Jimmy? I have a related question. Yes. Uh, sidewalk repaving? Uh -huh. Yes. That's on here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're sidewalks have taken a hit they really in front have. of Park House. Everywhere. everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, it's cold. Yeah, I just uh, see, oh, yeah. Yeah. see what's right near my house. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's it's cold. So, is that um a plan or is that eventually going to be a plan you don't know we're, we're, looking, at, we're looking at sidewalks as a, as a major project
project for the town. Right. For the village. Right. So, I, I was here for some of those preliminary meetings. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. No, this winter has definitely left them in shape where it's going to force the issue. Um, just the question is, is money. Martha. Um, I seem to remember from a past like we made. Did we did the town apply for some sort of a grant <clears throat> to get the sidewalks repaired? Or? We, have a, we, have a, we got a grant from to study it. Oh, to, oh it was know, for which is the first step in getting implementation mm -hmm. grants is they want to see that you properly analyzed it and looked at all the factors. So it's, we've, we've started down that walk. If say. one of them came and looked, they said, no, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would. It more likely we're going to have to just attack some of the bad spots and, and just just deal with it. There, uh, there's, it's a big, it's, it could be a big project, but there's a lot of hot spots that we're just going to need to address that are just downright dangerous. Yeah. But I think we need to be a little more uh, cognizant of what kind of machinery we're using to clean those sidewalks off with. Um, and where we let people park. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Prevent further damage. I think a lot of the, the breakdown at, at the park house was from people parking up on there. And people yeah, right across the park. street, and I can tell you they do that regularly. It's yeah, yeah. So uh, it's broken up right down to the, to the ground up there. Um, but that's, they, we had that on there. It's, it's definitely an issue. Joan, is there anything else you wanted to talk about before we fly on? Because we can, um, so basically, yeah, the sidewalks is, um, I put that on the agenda. I have a whole half a pickup truck full of town sidewalks. Just one second. I wanted to ask Joan something. Yeah. To the V trams in relation to the uh, planning commission. Did I? Did you ask? Me? Will you? Oh, if I. You haven't. Sure. You mean the same stuff? The, yes. Yeah. I'm glad to do that. Yeah. No. Can you give us some Dan? Is it true? Send it to Dan. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So we recently, the our downtown designation. Um, status lapsed for, because of a, a, a whatever reasons and it, we're in the process of reapplying for that which involves rewriting aspects of the town plan and that's why it lapsed is because the town plan needs there's new requirements for what it addresses and so that is one of the factors that would come into play in terms of increasing our eligibility for grant monies to deal with the sidewalks on a, on a larger basis. But the um, one interesting thought that I had is the, the discussion that happened at, a, at an earlier meeting about what to do with the Dandelion Daycare Building and is that need to go off with the union with Stockbridge or does it not if the town took repossession or took possession of that building and I wonder how, if we could sell that and, and use some of that money to, to attack this project, since this is not something we've budgeted for, the sidewalks, we've been working towards getting grant money for it, but there's, that's a, maybe reaching a little bit, but that is a thought I had that would. Isn't it owned by the school? It is, it is, but it's part of the property that would get sold to the new supervisory union and since there seems to be an abundance of property it's not clear i was headed to a school board meeting last week but that got canceled because of snow yeah. it's just uh, um i thought someone had brought up what's going to happen with that building and what does need to do with it so. i agree with you. the town should take possession of it i think the town should pursue you know, opening it up as a daycare that it was remodeled for. It was brought right up to specs. A lot of money was spent on that. People are looking for daycare. I mean, you could send these little surveys out, you know, and tucked into a school thing brochure, and you're not getting an accurate feel for what the demand is. 
if you put something in the newspaper saying you're going to open up a qualified daycare center in Rutland and see what kind of intake you get, you know, you might get a different story. Right. You've right. got the grammar school right there. You know, there's a lot of possibilities there, there with the daycare. A lot of people have put energy into that, but so far it's not panned out to be. I haven't, I haven't spent this. I'm not on the school board. I don't know what the story is about that, but I, I know there was a big push to do that, and it, and it fizzled. And I don't know the details of what happened there. I mean, if we had a stellar educational system down there with something to really offer that would draw people in, there'd be people that would bring their kids there so that they could leave them off and get to their job. I don't know, just throwing it out there. You have to find someone that's interested in that. If, we have, if you thought of like advertising in a paper saying you've got a daycare that's up to state standards, you need somebody to run it? Have you thought about running it as a business for the town? I think, that, I think some of that activity did take place. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not on behalf of the select I mean, board. No, no, it just seems no. stupid to give it away. No. Anyway. Jim, can you say how much of the sidewalk project we, the town would actually be responsible for um, funding? I think, I think all, I don't think the state deals with sidewalks. Uh, they're, they deal with the road, but the sidewalks are the town's responsibility. There is the bike path one, which is the one that we did get that Martha was talking about, but they tried to turn us into Woodstock. Mm -hmm. The whole point of that was to get the sidewalks repaired, right. and then we go through this fancy study by Du Bois and King, and they should know better. <laughs> They're just over the mountain. But, um, yeah, that was a pretty elaborate stuff yeah. proposal. And those are taken up this year, so. Mm -hmm. I think it was 600000 but we came up with a different plan that was more suited to what the town wants to do. There is that phase two of that same grant, which comes through VTrans, um, which will pay for sidewalks. And I'm not that familiar with the criteria and how much fancy stuff you have to do. I'm sure you have to address drainage and stormwater runoff and things like well, that's that. That's been the, so, the thing is putting the cart before the horse is because we don't want to do a bunch of work. We've had this conversation right. before, but we right. don't want to do a bunch of sidewalk work and then have the state come it tear it up to address the, the drainage on Route 100. Yeah. So there's, that's the, you know, the first step is to deal with the runoff, the stormwater runoff, which there is money out there in the state. They came through last summer and identified hot spots in town and where the repairs need to be made. And, yeah, that was the 2015 report, and so what we're doing now is the stormwater master plan that's mm -hmm. underway now, and you know we've made sure that they understand what the problems are right in the village, and that's where their focus is. Right. And hope what they're going to do, uh, I think their report is due in uh, August. We'll be meeting with them sooner than that, and I'm not coming in for an interim report, but but the idea is that they'll come up with a plan that will address that aspect of the sidewalk problem um, and then make recommendations and prioritize projects to address it. So it may be that at least some of the funding for, for that kind of work could come through that phase two of the sidewalk and pedestrian grants. Yeah, Probably would come that, from other sources as well. It was definitely a sponsor we're going to have to just deal with. Mm -hmm. Right, it's not an interim thing. Yeah. Right. It's not going to deal with the emergency stuff. Yeah. All will become clear when the snow melts. Mm -hmm. but, um, the um, appointments we have uh, appointments for going forward into. Do you want to just talk about time change for March 27th? Can do that first? Shoot that back a little bit. What time is the school on? Seven? <laughs> Yeah, the school meeting's at 7. 7? So maybe. So you want to try and put me at 5.30? Yeah. Yeah. 5.30 on the, um, the next meeting. Do you post meeting time changes on the website? It's on the agenda. It's on the agenda, and that should be uh, on, the on the website. website. Yeah. 5.30. 
assistant town clerk treasurer that expires in 2018 would that be the first of july in 2018 that that expires no nope, i've already reappointed him you've already already appointed him oh, so all right so and you're willing to stay on as the select board clerk <laughs> please mm. and joan um well you're actually um not so much appointed, you're hired. So. Nice. <laughs> I mean, they got that again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working here. <laughs> so, uh, Mark Palio is good through 2019, correct? Yes, I think he didn't. He's first constable, yes. 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 So, we want to appoint him to. We should probably stagger him. March 2020 or something? Well, that's, um, yeah, I think that's, a, that's probably a good idea. So Randy, uh, as in Bruyard? Bruyard, yes. Yeah. He's already done second, second constable. constable. So are you reappointing him? I didn't quite hear. Yes. And uh, we'll still uh, Tom Simpson as special officer. We haven't had to call on him too much, but I think he's still willing to. 3-2019. Yeah, 3-2019. <laughs> and with the local emergency planning commission, uh, we have Mark Belisle on there to to I, I, probably continue on with that he likes that job and the planning board and board of adjustment we currently have Dave Curtis Joan Pontius Dan McKinley Sandy Haas Julie Martin Eric Bowen Bowman Greg White and I'm the ex officio from the select board so we have two that are that term expires this year the mm -hmm. top two David and Joan yep and I think that um, I haven't talked to him, but do you talk to him? No. no not They're not here to object. They're not here to object, so <laughs> I appoint <laughs> them. And then I can, can, to we're going to reappoint David Dave Curtis, Curtis and John Pontius. Okay, thank they you. just don't know it. Yeah. 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 But I think they're going to go for it. <laughs> no. Um, no. All right, then I'm. Um, Zoning administrator. The zoning administrator. I guess I'll do that unless anyone else is dying to take over that. Job going once, going twice. Okay. And Fire Chief um, Terry Severy. That's elected, You're right? Elected. You're all elected. Well, that's all. Okay. And we're by default the water commissioners, and um, I've been the road commissioner up until now. I guess I'd be going to the unless Tom, you've been like awake at night wishing that you were the road commissioner. It's been my dream. <laughs> but, but no, I'm going to let you go. I'll let you keep it. I don't want to take it away. Right. 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 I'm sorry. That's I'm me. Right. I'm huh? still, I'm going to stay the road commissioner. No, that's okay. What else have we got? I guess um, by default, uh, how about how about this one? I, I've been the on-site wastewater officer. Would you like to take that on, Tom? Since you're a little more, I uh, love wastewater. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're in charge of the plant up at, at, at your place of employment, so that 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 makes sense for you to sure. I I move to point Tom to the on-site wastewater officer. Little <laughs> badge. Crap inspector. Yeah, the town. Yeah. It's an inspector. And um, for the Two Rivers out of Kuichi, uh, regional planning uh, representative, and you offered to do that last year. How's your experience been so far? Are you, you want to keep on with that? It's a steep learning curve. I think I'm still learning. Still learning? Stick with still it. willing to, to learn with it. Yeah. 
and then the um, on the two rivers on uh, the Quichi Regional Commission Advisory Commission. I guess I'll go with you to those meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, that meets together, stays together. Yes, oh, and right. um, yeah. that's eight night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. It's yeah. becoming that way. So when Joan, the um, Two Rivers Ottaquichi Regional Commission, did you know that you're the um, Clean Water Advisory Commission? I'm on the Clean Water, Clean Water. Advisory Committee, yes. Yeah, it's good clean fun. Absolutely. <laughs> stay with that? Sure. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Andy, right? uh, So Mike's term is October 31st. October 31st. Mm -hmm. I think that we could still, I, I, Reappoint him if he doesn't want to. He'll be signing the paper. Yeah. Okay, yeah, who's this? I can't hear you better. No, I'm sorry. Mumbling. The health officer would be John White. Okay. And the town service officer, I think Paula Doherty would continue in that. And for the um, emergency management director, Vic Rubato is uh, doing a good job on that. I would nominate him or appoint him to do that and I'll be continue with the alternate as that and Rob Gardner is the emergency management coordinator and I give him a try unless he complains let's reappoint him for that mm -hmm. what exactly is that for? so <laughs> that's that's basically communications communications you mean emergency management it's just a generator. The next flood we have. Right. The next flood we have. Right. It's like, you know, when people struggle so related hazmat. Hazmat. There's, yes. you don't know until it comes up, and then you have to. Vic is it's pretty, yeah. <laughs> so let me get the Rob would be emergency management coordinator. Coordinator. Vado is emergency management director. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's director. And basically, if the shit hits the fan, um, everybody pitches in as much as they can. <laughs> Coordinating easy. Yes. All yeah. right. Thank you. One yeah. directs. One yeah. minutes. And um, the energy coordinator is was Marv Harvey, right? Would he has an interest in that? We'll we'll appoint him until he says otherwise. Bring on the solar. Yes. And he was also at the Bethel Royalton Solid Waste Advisory. Commissioner, and until he says he doesn't want to do that, I he's a civic minded fellow. Jim, even though you're not on the select board anymore, would you be willing to stay on as a recycling coordinator? Yeah, thank you. And Martha and Joanne, would you guys like to stay on as a park committee? Oh, sure, we've been the park committee for years. <laughs> All right. And you're also on the rec committee, but that's um, that's more of a volunteer thing, not really an appointed thing. Yes. Yeah. And then we've got Mark Belisle as an animal control officer, pound keeper, and humane officer. I could, um, keep him on with that. He did go back and get that dog that we saw the other day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Found out who owned it. Um, I would reappoint Tim Crowley as a stagecoach mm -hmm. representative. Yep. Vic Roboto, I think, will still stay as a representative to mm -hmm. Werva, seeing as he's the president of Werva, that makes sense. And Jim, you are the alternate to that. Would you stick on with that? I can. All right. Norm Smith has been the tree warden as long as I can remember. He probably mm -hmm. would still be willing to do that. And the E911 maintenance, I appoint Angus Cusker mm -hmm. to do that. And the Green Up Day coordinator is Donovan Desmond. And Desmond. Pichicudo. Pichicudo. They're still around to do that. Yes. Yeah. And the Community Advisory Board, Marvin. They've been in the water for years. Yeah. If it ever does come back. If it does come back, Marvin will let us know if something's exciting happening. So with the Budget and Finance Committee, I'd um, like to reappoint Lois Bond, Robert Meagher, Greg White, of course the select board members by default, 
Barb De Barb DeHart, and Vic Rubato, Nancy Woolley, and Jim, you would ask that you'd be like to be involved with that still. And Norm Christensen. Norm Christensen. No, he's no, no, he's the website. website. Oh, sorry. Is it Greg White on that one? Yes. Yeah. Greg White, yeah, yeah, got it. And Greg is never getting off of that. <coughs> no, <right. laughs> he's good. That's right. And yes, Norm Christensen is the website administrator. And we're going to ask him to link uh, to Orca Media so we have a quick access to, to the video documentation. And we've got the Kirkpatrick Scholarship Presenter. We have no one in there, and that it seems like that is also kind of in, in La La Land right now with the school change. Yes, Mark. I just want to tell you, I'm on a committee that um, is working on having the final, um, organ helping organize the final graduation and have a special present, a special obs observance for the town the, uh, the week before, the same day as Alumni Bank. So um, there will be a, there will be a graduation for the six seniors and uh, that'll be our final graduate graduation our 124th mm. so um i don't you know i mean there may be someone who applies i don't know yeah okay but that would be the final one as far as i know unless the i don't know what the criteria are for the for the scholarship but unless it could be presented um, to a rochester resident student going who's graduating somewhere else some of them uh, we've been looking into that. Some of the uh, scholarships could be still, you know, but that's something that the school and the town will have to talk, yeah. talk yeah. about. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because some of them were, you know, the money was left in those trust funds, like right, it's very particular. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's all right. That's all right. It's all part of our town story. So the scenic byway representative would reappoint Larry Pleasant. Sure. And the uh, EC fiber representative would reappoint John White. And Jeanette is, is hired. The auditors are hired. The um, official newspaper I would um, um, redesignate the Herald of Randolph for that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's that. Okay, so what have we got here? This is that. Oh, that's okay, that. Yeah, that's Norm and his bills. Yep, so really, that's, um, that's it. And um, thank you for coming. Oh, Keeper. Um, up on uh, Maple Hill at the base of Marine Hill, there's a porta toilet that's been there since that culvert was put in since last summer. Just went up there today and it's still there and it's in a precarious place. I haven't smashed into it, it's down the brook and I'm downstream. You know what their plan is? Uh, I'm guessing it's probably frozen in the ground. Frozen. I'm guessing now, I don't yeah. know. Well, it would be yeah. yeah, until spring, so. Uh, it's not, it's right next to a large tree, so I don't think it's... Well, unless uh, somebody it's came around the curve. I, I, it's a keeper, right. probably. I don't know what it's doing there, you know. So, you is know, there any toilet paper, paper in it? it? I, <laughs> it's great if you're hiking up there, it's kind of convenient. <laughs> <laughs> the same contract we left that behind is going to be doing the wastewater for right, so the frame, so... so it will probably move it down. Maybe you'll pick it up and move it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. I assume that's right. probably frozen the ground so they can't get it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's the other one's here. I can't believe they're paying yeah. for it. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. They we'll definitely need to pick it up. But it, mm -hmm. it's, you know, but I, I live above that and I can assure you I, I won't hit it. I don't think it could be very awesome. It says in you something. 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 It says in you something
Tom for, for coming.